How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Amatsutsumi. So we just got done talking with uh, the new Hotaru clone, Coffee, whatever the hell she is. And I don't know, we got a little bit of her perspective coming right off of the real Hotaru. I think we've got a, a better idea, truly, of what is going on even after the big reveal. But it is very complicated because we are not communicating with the same person that we were communicating with in previous episodes. And you can really argue the same thing for really a lot of this playthrough. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very complicated. That, that's really the only word I can use here. So are we two timing? Are we three timing? Somebody asked me that in the previous episode. No, we're, we're still hanging around the same person. It's just um, a different variation a different like time stamped I, I don't know it, it's it's so complicated it's so weird after walking Hotaru to the hospital's front gate I headed back home Kokoro and Mana are still out at their movie so I eat my lunch alone with Azuki-san oh yeah it's the weekend oh no it's actually summer vacation that's right and we woke up hella late there's time until evening so I think about doing some of my summer homework but with my stomach full, I start to get sleepy too. Hmm. I didn't sleep well last night either. I stifle a yawn. I don't think I'm in any danger of oversleeping if I just take a nap. I take off my jeans and t-shirt, put on my yukata, and get under the covers. It's a peaceful summer afternoon. My stomach is full and the room is pleasantly cool. I feel happiness all around me. See, this is how happy the world can be. In my heart, I send a message to my past self stuck in the village, and also to the girl trapped in the dark hospital room. And good night. Nothing like a good old daytime nap. Though I did take a nap, I think like Friday? No, Thursday. Thursday, so still during the week. Still during the work week. I decided to take like a one hour nap, like 6.30 in the evening, and that one hour nap turned into three hours. I woke up at 9.30 and I was like, like, the eyes burst awake and everything. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, naps are dangerous if you uh, don't like set an alarm or something. After that, I woke up in the evening to the sounds of Kokoro and Mana returning to, uh, from their movie, and I went downstairs to eat dinner with them. With all this eating and sleeping, I expect I'll start getting fat pretty soon. That is also a, uh, Unfortunate side effect to napping, by the way. You move around less. You're burning less calories. Or are you? Eventually, 7 p.m. comes and goes. Oh, yeah. I start to leave the house, but Kokoro spots me on my way out. Oh, I thought I'd take an evening walk. I try out the lie I came up with earlier. Oops, my lie had the opposite effect. I kind of saw that one coming. I think about using my Kododama to get out of this, but I remember the original Hotoru's smile and decide not to. Well, actually, I was planning to meet up with Hotoru. Oh, Sorry. いいの。マナちゃんには黙っててあげる。ご指と友の散歩なんて、ロマンチックで羨ましいからね。今度は私を誘ってね。Sure. Uh-huh. I feel like there was something wrong there, but if I don't leave soon, I might be late. Thanks for letting me off the hook, Kokoro. So you can't show a yada no. I see. I pat her on the head. Thanks for being so considerate, Kokoro. Hi, <laughs> Nani-san. I guess that worked. Uh, here we go to our lovely spot. Nani-san. Hey yo. Huh? Hotaru's sudden strange greeting throws me off balance. Why are you calling me Nisan? <laughs> Nail on the head. You're quite the detective, Hotaru. It's one thing to figure that out from my face, but from the way I was talking, walking? Excuse me. <laughs> were you able to get some sleep? <laughs> oh, we were. Sucks for you. Then she shakes her head. <laughs> what was the point of lying first? 
A bad one. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that. I don't know whether it's because she got some sleep or whether she feels more relaxed after our talk in the chapel, but the Hotoru I know is back. I love this side of you too. <laughs> it's hard to tell in the pale moonlight, but Hotoru is definitely blushing. Ha, <laughs> you're just as weak as the, or to the word love as always. <laughs> I meant what I said. She tries to protest, but I simply smile. Tonight, I'm going to be telling you about all those cute moments and many more. Uh, so, so she nods shyly. Because we got to bring her to the place. You've already guessed, haven't you? Bingo. I knew you'd figure it out. At this rate, I shouldn't need to throw in many extra explanations. Your guess really was mostly accurate, though. But the place wasn't actually right here. It's a short walk from here. Following my gaze, she raises her eyebrows. Eyebrows. There is. Our memories are there. I hold out my hand to her. No, well, there's that too, but it's nighttime and the path isn't paved, so I don't want you to trip and fall. Aren't we so, uh, such, such a wonderful person? We have to recreate her love for us, because it's kind of non-existent. In a way, it's always been something that had to be built every week. With an elegant motion, she places her hand in mine. Her hand is soft and a little damp with sweat. Alright then, let's go. I said let's go, not let's dance. As she giggles, I scratch the back of my neck. I guess I know the bond dance, though I learned it in the village, so I don't know if it's the same as here. Dances have meanings? Oh, those carved wooden ones, like foxes and things. そうそう、そういうの。街だとアニメとか漫画の面ですけど、あれはね、お盆の時期になると死んだ人が戻ってくるから被ってるんだよ。火を囲んで盆踊りを踊っているうちに、いつの間にか輪の中に人が増えてる
being careful not to step on any flowers. And then... <gasps> We've seen this once before. She's surprised but smiling. The lights begin to float uh, serenely in the air around us, slowly flashing green. <laughs> yeah, just like your name, Hotaru. She extends her arms as if to welcome the gentle lights. It's the same sight I've seen before. Two of my memories of beginning and an ending. It wasn't just me. Hotoru and I found this place together. Nobody else knows about it. It's our secret place. Her joyful smile shrinks to a quieter one. Yes, romantic, isn't it? Actually, when I asked you to be my lover, you made the biggest fuss imaginable. I can't help but laugh at her self-indignation. Ah, uh, well, it was fine. There was extenuating circumstances. <laughs> Hotoru puts down her arms and sits down in the middle of the garden. It's like she's a kindergartner, excitedly getting ready for story time. I will. I'll be remembering as I go, so I'll take it slow. <laughs> and then I begin to tell her everything. This time, I start from when I left my village and tell her everything I can remember, one memory at a time. I don't hide a single thing. I tell her things I'd never told Ho to do before. Every small detail, every personal thought and feeling. I'm still not a skilled talker, uh, but it takes a very, very long time to get through it all. I don't think I've ever spoken so many words at once in my entire life, but I don't mind. In fact, I enjoy it the whole time. Me when I record. Because Hotoru is right there in front of me, listening all the way through. She sits quietly, not letting a single word of mine escape her ears. It's not that she doesn't react. When I speak of fun things, she laughs with me. When I speak of embarrassing things, she blushes with me. And when I speak of fear and doubt, she frowns right alongside me. Finally, I reach the last scene. One that occurred right where we're sitting now. Because no matter how many times I'm reborn... I'll always fall in love with you again. Those were your, prede your predecessor's last words. I fall silent for the first time in quite a while, having f finally run out of things to say. The air is humid, but my throat is dry, and my jaw aches slightly. Yeah, that'll do it. I would know. Hotoru speaks for the first time in quite a while, too. But then she falls silent again as she continues to process everything I've told her. While she does so, I take out my phone to check the time. We arrived a little after 8 p.m., and now it's already 1 a.m. of the following day. Jesus. Okay, maybe I've never spoken that much in a single setting, but, like, I've come close. Welcome to the story of a Matsutsumi. Her voice is quiet, wondering. If there's anything you'd like to ask about or that caught your interest, I can go into more detail. I mean, in a way it was. I don't know, it's, it's so strange because I've been thinking, and since it's been a few days since I last recorded, I've been thinking about the whole deal. Every ho to do that we've come across immediately stems off of the very sick and a really shitty personality of the real Hotoru. Which is strange, because, you know, as we talked about with this Hotoru in the previous episode, she was, I guess, referring to the original and her memories from when she was within and a part of the original. So, if there was a way to save the original... Would we get the same Hotoru that we see before us or something similar that we've seen 
in various parts of the game, I wonder. I see. I'm sure she hasn't finished digesting it all, so I wait without injecting any thoughts of my own. Pale green lights flicker and pulse in the air around us. Did you just like activate your bonkai or something? Huh? My eyes widen at Hotoru's sudden strange words. What was that? あなたのことを恋しく思っていると、沢を飛ぶホタルが自分の体から彷徨い出た魂のように思えてしまう。just like Kododama connects souls to words. She smiles sadly, but it quickly changes to a smirk. Ha. <laughs> I'm surprised to hear that poems from a thousand years ago still survive. But more than that, I'm amused to think that people back then were just like they are today. That's so nice. Humans are great. The smirk gives away or gives way to a placid smile. The last. Oh, I have. I know why we told her everything. I know what our objective is. I'm the one who chose our objective. To, to, be, to be totally honest with you guys, our plan is to kill the original. Or that. Or we could just let her die. I mean, is that murder? Oh. I had anticipated some of what she just said, but I had hidden it away in my subconscious. Scared that if I put it into words, it might turn out to be true. Okay. I gotcha. She puts both hands to her heart and nods. And that's okay. But her attempt to break the tension with humor fails to reach me. I'm thinking I interrupt her. I still want to try to find a way to save you somehow. You might accept your death, but I don't. I won't give up. There's still something you have left to do? Well, 
幸に幸せな時間にすること。それと。She comes a step closer and puts her hand to my cheek. I think that's possible. There's no hesitation. There's nothing stopping her. This is the last stop, really. I'm certainly all in favor of both of those, but isn't there anything else you need to do? I hope she's not neglecting other things just to make me happy. But her smile doesn't falter. I don't know. I like to sleep. She laughs. Instead of answering, I take my beloved into my arms and kiss her. It's her first kiss, but she responds to me perfectly naturally. I mean. But I, don't, I don't know what I mean. There's, there's nothing I can really fall back on there for that. She really is like a different person, but at the same time, she isn't. Ah,、oh, that's so complicated. After finally saying all that needed to be said, we make our way back towards the town. You don't say. Actually, I just realized. Reluctant to part with her, I try to come up with another topic of conversation. Does anyone besides me know that there are multiple Hotodus? What about your parents? Ah. Eh. That is interesting, actually. I was wondering the same thing. Maybe they could help you somehow? Probably think you're a fucking curse or something. I see. それだけでもショックなのに。うん、うん、け、I I I kind of get you know their perspective a little bit there。こうやって、It's really fucked up。元気なフダルが目の前にいたりするから、いろいろと混乱していて、どうしていいかわからなくなっちゃっているだけなんです。ご飯とか、お父さんやお母さんと一緒のテーブルで食べていても、味気ないことだけが。At least she doesn't have to live in complete secret either. I feel like that would just destroy her every week. I see. That must be another reason why she would come to Cafe Origami to eat so often. I know a little bit about how a family gets when one of their children is about to die, since I saw it happen with Mana and Nozomi. It's only natural for things to get that way. There are some wounds that only time and distance can heal. Even after Nozomi died, it got so bad that Mana started practically living in my house. Wait, that's right. Hotodu, if you like, why don't you come and live at our house for a while? What? If it's awkward living with your family, I'm sure Azuki san and Kokodo would be happy to have you, and it'd be fun. Uh, then, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. There's no way Azuki san or Kokodo would say no. Ma あの二人なら、誠さんが言霊を使うとかしなくても、もちろん OK してくれるでしょうけど、お誘いの理由は、それだけ Well, uh, no, there's another reason. I want to spend as much time with you as possible, Hotodu. I scratch my cheek embarrassed as Hotodu chuckles. そちらの理由なら、oh, perfect. OK ですね。That was easy. What if, do, what if they do say no? What if Azuki and Kokoro and Mana all like completely reject the idea? That would suck. That would be greatly unfortunate. <laughs> It's Kododama time, you know? I wake up the next morning to bright sunlight shining into my room. Ugh, good morning. It's too bright to open my eyes at first, but I say good morning anyway to no one in particular. Yeah, I've noticed he just says good morning. I tentatively open one eyelid. It looks like another peaceful summer morning. It's been a while since I slept so well. Is it morning though? I head downstairs to make breakfast. This time I'm making five portions instead of four. This is like the time Kyoko was staying here. Since Hotoru is here, I decide to make something delicious pancakes. The next person to wake up is Azuki san. <laughs> Morning, Mom. If you'd prefer something with rice, I can start,、uh, start that going too. Huh? 
Huh, I didn't realize that. Uh, it was too late last night to get your permission, but actually, Hotoru stayed the night here. No, I asked Kokoro, or Kokoro and Mana to let her sleep in their room. Sorry I didn't ask first. Uh, the plan kind of came together kind of late. I bet the opposite happens too, Kokoro sleeping over at Hotoru's house, I mean. Yeah, she really does have a fancy bed. Oh. She must be talking about the bed I saw in the original Hotoru's hospital room. I did think it looked out of place there, but they must have had it move from her or move it in from her bedroom, excuse me. That makes sense. I mean, if that's where you're gonna be at for the rest of your fucking life, I guess, you know. Be in your own bed, your own comfy ass bed. Azuki san and I continue with our small talk for a while. Nobody else seems to be coming downstairs, so the two of us end up eating our pancakes first. It's summer vacation after all, people are allowed to sleep in. I know I did a lot when I was uh, enjoying my summer vacations, a little bit more so whenever I was going to university. And I guess, I guess also high school. When I, uh, when I was going to community college, I always took summer courses because I am stupid. Well, no, that's not the reason. It's just I had nothing better to do, and I thought it'd be a good use of my time. By the time Kokodo and Hotoru wake up, I'm already helping to prep the cafe for opening. Even Hotoru is laughing at how sleepy-eyed Kokodo is. And she will. You seem pretty sleepy, Kokoro. She nods so drowsily that I can't tell whether she's saying yes or whether she's just falling asleep on her feet. Uh, then I guess we won't see Mana for a while. I doubt she'll come down before lunch. Azuki san guides Kokoro to the sink to wash her face. Neither. Apparently, we get a summer vacation from cafe work, too. How so? Good point. By the way, are you good with pancakes for breakfast? You're in a bouncy mood today. That is true. We had a lot of important discussions over the past couple of days, but there's no need to be stuck in that serious mood forever. I invited her to stay with us on a whim, but I'm glad it seems to be working out well so far. Oh, old Mama Azuki over there wouldn't like that idea. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, to be honest, I didn't think very deeply about it. I'm not lying. When we reached home last night, Azuki-san was asleep, so we went to tell Kokoro and Mana instead. And before I knew it, Kokoro was shouting pajama party and dragging Hotoru into her room. Should I have just taken you directly to my room last night? Huh? What's this? She usually doesn't continue on after telling me something is just a joke. So, so 
Sure. So, since we're going to be together all day, is there anything special you'd like to do together? I put on my apron as I ask her. In that case, let's hang out with Kokoro and Mana. Apparently, they went to see a movie together yesterday. So, how about something like that? Do you want to go see one? You want to do something memorable, right? Just let me know if there's anything you weren't allowed to do or anywhere you weren't allowed to go. Apparently, she doesn't have any problems with me using Kododamas for minor things like that. She thinks to herself for a moment and then looks around the cafe. Did you think of something? I continue talking to her absent-mindedly as I watch the pancake. What? Yeah, wait. <laughs> Why? Why would you want to do that? I'm never really excited to go to work, to be honest. I guess I was when I was younger because, like, you know, money. Before long. Oh my god. They had... They had a... This is the same shit that Azuki wears, right? Or something similar? They had something like this in her size? Under the blue sky, Hotoru's energetic voice rings out in the street. Wow, she talks so fluently. Kokoro and I stand nearby, watching in admiration. I wondered why Hotodu would want to work here, but apparently she mainly wanted to wear the cafe origami uniform. Azuki-san was happy to let her, and even helped her put it on. Then she put Hotodu on advertising duty out front. With her quick wit and silver tongue, it's the perfect role for her. By the way, that uniform can't be mom's, right? It's much smaller. Wait, that fits? Why don't you usually wear it? <laughs> I'd like to see you wearing it, though. Wait, didn't we see her wear it at one point? I don't remember. It's been a long playthrough. Hotoru winks at us, holding up the sleeve of her kimono. Oh yeah. You're very cute, really. I think I'm falling in love with you all over again. She really is adorable. The ribbon in her hair is different from the one Asuki-san wears, but its red color su uh, suits her well. Uh, she seems to have everything, huh? She has all kinds of... Yeah, there we go. Why? Huh? Hotodu twirls her paper umbrella and turns back to the people walking down the street. The cafe is already filled to capacity, and there are several people in line outside too. And once the line forms, other people walking by get curious and start joining the line too. Hotodu poses for the outstretched phones of the people gathering nearby. 
ただいま満席となってございますしかしご安心くださいませこの店の看板娘代理であるこの私が本日はお並びの皆様の時間を忘れさせてみせましょう時間泥棒心の泥棒持ってけ泥棒の精神でございますそもそもなぜ私は店内にいる麗しの女性店長が大正ロマンあふれる姿をしているかと申しませばそこには聞くも涙語るも涙の物語がございます How many expressions does she have in this one CG? だがしかしただでさえ湿度が高くて蒸し暑い日本の夏にこれ以上の湿っぽさなどいりませんでしょう力が私ども可愛く楽しく皆様にもカラッと晴れた笑顔を浮かべてもらうためお客様への心尽くしを身にもまとっておりまするば要するにいい子いますよというわけでございます Wow, she talks so fluently. かわいいね。Haven't we gone through this already? We seem to be repeating ourselves, but it's really the truth. The crowd outside is growing even larger. Mana wanders outside of the cafe to see what's going on. The noise must have woken her up since her face still looks sleepy. Oh, hi, Mana. Mana looks around. There are more than a dozen people in line, probably closer to 20. <laughs> Even Mana is shocked by the number. I can't help but laugh. Yes, it really is in a way. After that, there were so many customers that Kokoro and I had to help out after all. Even Mana lent a hand. Eventually, we ran out of ingredients and had to switch to a drinks only menu before evening came around. When the cafe finally closed, the four of us stepped outside together. Damn, what a, what a work day. Thanks, Hotoru. So much for a summer vacation, huh? <laughs> Hotoru's delighted laughter rings out under the sunset sky. Yeah, it really was. Even while working inside, we could hear Hotoru's voice from outside, and it, was, it put us in a joyful mood. My customers were all smiling the whole time, too. I mean, you did far more than just wear the outfit. I feel that. ああ、ママちゃんもご近所さんの顔を覚えたんだね。だ、だってあの人たち母さんに慣れ慣れしいから。まあ、うちご近所さんの顔を覚えたんだね。だ、だってあの人たち母さんに慣れ慣れしいから
but her life will come to an end much sooner than the summer will. Today's Tuesday, right? I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, wait, actually. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Monday, we got the explanation and then also reminisced with Hotodu. That went into the night, and now Tuesday's her working day. To save my beloved Hotodu, I must save the original Hotodu. I don't know that I want to let that thing loose on the world, but even if I wanted to, I really have no other way of saving or I have no way of saving her. I thought about it plenty of times when Azuki's son was on her deathbed. The only thing that can save one life is another life. And neither I nor Mana have enough life force left in us to actually do that. Should I have left Azuki's son to die? The thought has crossed my mind before, but the answer is absolutely not. Then, what about if I go back to the village and bring someone from there to help? No, I can't do that either. Such kododamas are forbidden there, and only a person who cares deeply for Hotoru could summon the level of emotion needed anyway. In which case, only us. One other option is to use someone else's life. Is that possible? Whoa, where's this music coming from? I've never used my Kododama to steal someone's life, or someone else's life force, and I've never heard of anyone else doing it either, but I think it's probably possible. The taboo in the village is that one must never use Kododama in matters of life and death. It's clear why using Kododama to preserve life is forbidden. Doing so kills the user, as proved by my mother, and almost proved again by me. As for why it's forbidden to use Kododama to cause death, well, that must be because it would quickly spiral out of control. Suppose you were killing someone to save someone you loved. Then someone you loved, uh, or who loved them, would kill someone else to save them. It would be an unending cycle of death. If it weren't taboo to begin with, the whole village would surely be wiped out in a generation. And what's more, suppose there was a third Kododama user here besides me and Mana. What if they came to me and said that as a part of a ritual to save someone they loved, they needed to kill Hotoru or Mana or Kokodo or Azuki-san or Kyoko? I would never allow them to do that. Koichi, my school friends, my teachers, the cafe regulars, I wouldn't let any of them die for such a reason either. And if I wouldn't let a stranger do it to my friends and acquaintances, can I really do it to a stranger myself? Sure I can. If I have, or if it will save Ho to do, I don't mind some random tourist dying or two or three. That's what my heart is whispering to me. Actually, maybe there's no need for anyone to die. All I have to do is take a little bit of life force from each of a large number of people. They'd never notice it was missing. Take the students at school, for example. They're overflowing with life. They wouldn't miss a little bit, would they? If I shave one year each off of the lives of a hundred people, that would be more than enough, right? But what exactly is one year worth of life force? Suppose I spoke a Kododama to someone, give me a year of your life force. What would happen? I don't know. Hotodu called my Kododama arbitrary in what it can do. In truth, it all hinges on how the user thinks and feels. Life force doesn't have a fixed shape or form. A Kododama user can finally grind down their own life force but what if the souls of others are indivisible units to them? Then there's no meaning in saying a year of your life force. As soon as I spoke the Kododama, the, the person's soul would be taken and they would die. No, actually, maybe that's even better. If the, pers if the first person I try it on gives me their whole soul, that'll be more than enough. And because I tried to only ask for one year of their life force, I'll have a good excuse. Yeah, it'll work. I can save her. I can do this. I am he who speaks. Bane but a word, boon but a word. Yeah, let's not do that. So this is what evil is. The sweat on my skin runs cold at the brutality of my thoughts. Darkness spreads before my eyes. This is how the original Hotodu thinks. Is there such a thing in this world as a life that it, it's okay to let die? The laws of nature demand that disease claim the life known as Minazuki Hotoru. Azuki-san's illness was no different. It's not anyone's fault. This is the structure of the world and its natural shape. But what then are we Kododama users? 
Am I an example of evil in the world that distorts the natural order? Yeah. If I cross this line, I'll become nothing more than a monstrous devourer of souls. Makoto-san? Huh? Hearing my name suddenly called, I look up. I'm sweating profusely all over my body. The sweat drips down my temples, down my spine, between my chest and my shirt. My entire body is soaked as if I'd been caught in the rain. <laughs> Hotodu is looking at me calmly, nonetheless. Uh, what? Looking behind her, I don't see the, the other two. How long have I been lost in my thoughts? I see. Uh, where are we going? Sorry, I'm getting a drink. Ah. This Hotoru still hasn't seen the cats yet. I put my hand on my chest, where my heart is still beating very quickly, and then wipe the sweat off my brow with my arm. Sorry, I kind of spaced out. Yeah, you do not want to know. That shit was getting dark. Yeah, I don't think we should. Whatever that was. Why not? What kind of face was I making? I think it was like, uh, the fact that we may have found a solution, but at the same time, our guilt was like killing us for it. It's an evil solution. It's something that might work, but it, it really does cross that line. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Makoto could pull something like that off. I didn't even think of that. I mean, yeah, if you, if you could, I guess, project your life force in one direction, then I'm sure you can... Do the opposite. Take life force. Basically reverse the switch. But at the same time, sure, you would be successful maybe in saving the original Hotoru. But your guilt will kill you for the rest of your life. I see. I exhale. Oh yeah. She murmurs the words. Her tone is light and clear. Oh, we've heard that before. その時、あなたを止められる人は、あなた以外に渡れもいない。死ねって言われる人間のために怖いって言ってるんじゃなくて、そう言いたくなっちゃうあなたが可哀想なんだよ。そうじゃなくても特別な力があるからこそ誰かを助けるために誰かを傷つけるそういう選択を迫られることもあると思う誰も助けてくれない自分の善意と悪意の間であなたがぺっちゃんこにされて苦しむんだろうなってその言霊の
But the one thing I haven't learned yet is to cry. What kind of favor? Feel like conquering the world, Empress Hotaru? Alright, then what? Well, I'll try my best if I have the time. Then go ahead and ask. Bro, you're gonna make me cry saying this shit. Stop. I don't think I can promise that. She looks away, but I take her hand. Then I pull her in close. If something is so sad that it'll make me cry, I'll never let it happen. Not ever. I try to wrap her in a hug, but she lightly evades my grasp and then pulls on my hand. Hmm. This game is actually gonna fucking destroy me in the end, isn't it? I know it's not the kind of problem I can solve just like that. So I'll be fast, but I won't be hasty. I feel the warmth of her hand in mine. Oh, to do tell me, how can I get better at bringing people happiness? The cats weren't there today. God damn it. Well, we got the bad ending. Jesus Christ. That's very unfortunate. Now it's nighttime. After my bath, I pass by the living room and decide to linger for a while before going to my room. From my sister's room, I can hear lively voices talking. They've stolen my hotodu away from me again. Now that's a pretty weird way to think about it. I scratch my head, which is still damp from my bath. It's just that there's so little time left. Whenever I'm not with her, I get anxious. Although she's fated to die in five days, she seems to be trying to live as normally as possible day to day. I realize that I'm lingering here in the living room, or, well, yeah, that the hope that I might catch her coming out of Kokodo's room, excuse me. This is kind of pathetic. Just before sunset, I saw how dangerous it could be to get too anxious about things. I think back over the past several weeks and smile ruefully. When I had just arrived from the mountains, people thought I had a very calm personality, but really, I just didn't know anything at all. In retrospect, I was incredibly ignorant back then. In a way, we're still ignorant. We're always ignorant. We're always learning. I decide to head back to my room and think about what to do with the original ho to do once again. But just as I start to leave the living room... Ora? Hey. Oh. ho to do comes out of Kokodo's room. What's up? I just took a bath and was headed back to my room. The girl I love smiles. I suppose it is a coincidence after all, but I'm glad I stopped here for a few minutes. Oh, could you tell Kokodo and Mana the bathroom's free when you go back? She starts to head downstairs to the ground floor bathroom, but then she stops. What do you mean? Ah, I see. I wasn't the only one of us thinking of how to spend more time together after all. I feel like a weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Huh? Why not keep staying here? That is totally fair. I see. Of course. There are other people in her world than me. Still, I'd like her world to revolve around me. But no, thinking that way can end badly, like the way Mono once trapped me in her empty world. This is jealousy, possessiveness. I admit it. Come to, uh, come to think of it, in the past, you'd often make time for yourself in the second half of the week. 
いくら強がってみても土曜日や日曜になれば焦ってオリジナルみたいに人を傷つけたくなって人を避けて、yeah. でも今は最後はあなたと She tilts her head to the side. トイレに行くんだった。Yeah. She disappears down the stairs without another word. I know she was going to say at the end, I want to be with you. And in response, I would say, I won't let it be the end. Tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, I'll have her all to myself. It's predictable of me, I know, but I'm looking forward to it so much, I might find it hard to sleep. Ah, tom tomorrow can't come soon enough. To me, this is hope. I admit it. Oh, man. This whole situation truly is complicated. It's confusing. It's also very depressing, I do admit. I don't know if there really are other words I can use to describe how I feel here. It's just fucking painful. The next morning, the weather outside is as sunny as I feel inside. So, today, I'm going to service you all. Oh, hell yeah. We leave the house together after having brunch. Oh, to do、uh, joking around, and I'm smiling too. Still got advertising on the brain from yesterday, huh? You can do it again next week. She accepts my framing of the future without complaint. It's not that I'm saying anything has changed, but. She's probably long since been living for the moment. If there is a next week, she'll do it. If there isn't, then that's too bad, oh well. So, about today's date. Oh, it's her turn to, to fucking plan shit out, alright. Aw, but I did too. She's made the first move, and now I'm on the back foot. Grinning, she peers into my eyes. I tried to think of stuff you probably hadn't done, like going fishing or using my Kododama to tour a police station. What the fuck? Wow! Right? That was pretty clueless back when I tried to take Mana on a date, but now I've got the basics of dating down. I also know that Hotodu likes to do things that feel kind of dangerous or risky. Like what? I'd be down for that, what the fuck? You know, with no repercussions, of course. Boar hunting is hard for beginners. If you mess up, you can get hurt really badly. So I would suggest starting off with rabbits. Oh, I see. Come to think of it, I think I saw one or two rabbit plushies on the original Hotodu's bed. Well, anyway, enough about my ideas. What were yours? She suddenly starts to fidget. I wonder why for a moment, but then I realize I've seen this before. This is what she looks like when she's feeling shy about something love related. Ah, she's so cute. Nothing. I just can't wait to hear your date plans. I'm sure you spend a lot of time thinking them up. I mean, you've already told me you love me too, so aren't you able to speak freely about your love too? So, this is me. He meets you, Kakai Tata, Ima Made no Hotel Tachua. あなたの眩しさに目をくらませながらも憧れに薄くまぶたを開いていたのでしょうね。That makes me very happy to hear. Oops, I shouldn't interpret her. I want to hear her answer. I can't wait. あほんそのですね。これからの私の提案はおかしな意味はないんです。さまざまな要素と現状を熟慮した上で。これしかないという判断あいえ決断を下したわけで決して私という人間の身持ちが軽いわけではないんですただ過去の私がそれが一番効果があると気づいて実践したことで
Oh. Uh? Oh no, please continue. I gesture to her that she can resume her speech. Why did we interrupt? She fumbles with her parasol, opening it. I... I'm surprised that that's what we're opening a date up with, but okay. I knew it. She groans with a pitiful look on her face. That's right. She only has a week to live. She doesn't have time. Hotoru once said she wanted to connect physically to try to accelerate our emotional connection, and it worked. So all she's saying is that if it worked for her predecessor, it should work for her too. I'm in no position to stand in the way of that. I understand. Sure, I want to do naughty things too. Who doesn't? Sorry, I should have brought it up first. I apologize, but she apologizes right back. And that's how we get nowhere. But as they say, it's better to say thanks than to say sorry. That is true. Then let me say thank you instead. I do want to make you, or I do want to make love to you, but more importantly, I want you to really feel our love so that it grows stronger. She looks troubled, but there's no uncertainty in her words. We don't have to do it right this second, of course. I mean, if we were going to do it straight away, we could have just stayed in the house. Then where would we do this? What, what is your plan here? Uh, what? You want to do it outside? The previous Hotoru didn't seem to mind making love in the Oribe house, but the current one seems to mind a lot. Well, she probably has the right idea. Last time, Kokoro did peek into the room while Hotoru and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that did happen. That most definitely did happen. As I reminisce, Hotoru looks up at me from under her parasol. No, not at all. I don't know if this will help ease your mind, but she was really sensitive in a good way. I was shocked by how much pleasure she seemed... <laughs> she throws down her parasol, rushes to me, and starts beating her fists against my chest. It's as cute as always and doesn't hurt a bit. Ha, <laughs> sorry. I hold up both my hands and surrender, and then pick up the fallen parasol, fold it up, and decide to carry it for her. <sighs> Don't worry, I love that side of you too. <laughs> ah right, your body is back to how it was before. As long as the original Hotoru remains a virgin, my Hotoru will keep becoming a virgin every week. I, I was gonna I was gonna state a joke, but I don't know. I think it'll make me look bad. Oh no no. I shake my head, but well I mean I'm no virgin chaser, but you know. How to do suddenly points at my face and starts lecturing me angrily. そういうことばかりと言っても過言ではないのです。おとなしく、ほわほわしていて、柔らかい女の子らしい女の子は人気があるでしょう。しかし、しかし、しかし、だが、しかし、ホタルのように明るく晴れやかなタイプも親しみやすくて大人気。むしろ普段は際どいくせ
but with how rapidly and fluidly the words tumble out of her mouth, yeah, she just kept going. But I can't tell whether she's chewing me out, boasting, or having a nervous breakdown, or all three at the same time. <laughs> Yes. She starts psyching her up in the most bizarre fashion. I, uh, well, what can I say? She doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. Uh, what to do? I don't particularly mind, but are you sure you should be shouting let's get it on in broad daylight in the middle of the road? She suddenly looks around, apparently having forgotten where she was. There's nobody very close by, but someone might have heard her. It's hard to say for sure. <gasps> Hotadu tears off down the road, dragging me behind her. So yeah, that was... That was most definitely somewhat of a nervous breakdown back there. We've come some distance from home, and Hotoru is still lamenting petitiously, but I can only think about how cute she is. I almost want to praise myself for having the forbearance not to jump her bones right here. Or maybe I should curse myself for that. I don't think you really need to hide it. Super. It means a lot. Uh, no, even in the village, we'd sneak away somewhere private to do anything sexual. She's perfectly calm when talking about someone else. Yeah, in the summer, we even did it outside. She puts her hand to her mouth and averts her gaze. I feel like it'd be more difficult. Well, let me talk. I feel like it'd be more difficult, more uncomfortable too, a little bit more nervous because you'd be looking around, and also illegal. If you mean in terms of temperature, not really, but taking off your clothes outside does give you a sense of freedom, I guess. I pull my shirt away from my chest and let it snap back. When you take off a sweaty shirt before taking a shower, for example, doesn't the air feel nice on your skin? It's hard to feel that with your clothes on. Hotodu grasps her long skirt and flaps it a bit. Her cute ankles and shins appear when she does it. Your skirt is pretty similar to a yukata, but it seems like it would get kind of steamy under there. <sighs> she exhales. Looking closely, I see that her face is a little red. <sighs> Are you okay? I often hear about people collapsing from heat stroke in the summer heat, so I get worried. Oh, to do especially. Got it. I take her hand. It really is hot to the touch. I look around for a convenience store or something, or we could head back to the cafe. Hotodu starts walking ahead of me. There's an absent-minded look on her face. I can see the sweat on the back of her neck and hear her hot breathing. Where are we going? I'm too entranced by these things to notice, but something odd is happening. Hotodu is taking me behind some random building along a back street. It certainly seems like a good place to escape from the heat, but why here? <laughs> oh, I wonder. I wonder, my friend. Suddenly, she giggles. She squats in front of a fire escape at the back of the building. At first, I think she's too tired from the heat to walk any longer, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Her expression is kind of strange, too. Hotodu? Yeah, what what a what a strange expression right there. What what an absolutely strange one. Suddenly she grabs her skirt and lifts it up high. Ah! Not just her ankles and shins this time, but even her thighs and underwear are fully visible. Sure, I've seen girls flap their skirts to the air or to air them out before. 
But this, uh, how to do? Oh, we looking? Well, you guys aren't. She moans, her cheeks red with a mixture of shame and arousal. I'm completely at a loss for words. I can't think straight either. Damn this heat. My eyes are glued to her panties and I can't rest them away. Well, I don't think there's anything else to gain here. What a lovely situation. Well, that was fun. I feel like I always start off like after transitioning away from all that to, well, that was something that happened. I don't know. Afterward, I want to bathe as soon as possible. Yeah, that was, that was something. That was some outdoor sex. That was, they, they moved away from the back alley, went to the park and there were, there, they just kept going. They just did not stop. It might be a bit dangerous to go home straight away, so we decided to go to the lake first. But in particular, or what in particular is a bit dangerous? Well, that's simple. Yeah, she's a bit lightheaded now. I wonder why. She was already feeling kind of hot because of the weather, and now this. Who could have, who could have imagined? Hotaru seems out of it as she drifts down the path. Are you all right? They did go a little bit over the top, I will admit. It just kept going. She puts both hands to her cheeks and giggles. I do. She nestles up to me as we walk. Like a small kitten, she rubs her cheek against my arm. I lift that arm to hug her shoulders. She's right. And also, like, or, and also, like, just after coming out of the pool, our hair and skin are slightly damp. Are you sleepy? I mean, that was quite a bit of physical activity there. You probably sweated a lot. Once you've recovered a little, we can go back home and you can take a bath. After that, you should get some good sleep. But what? As I look down at her, look down at her next to me, excuse me, she looks up at me with a gentle smile. Oh, she want to retain that stank. She wants to keep it all to herself. Ah, I see. Oh, by the way, we also got total confirmation from that past scene that they are both perverts. They both have wicked ass sides of themselves. But who doesn't? A little. She smiles prettily and begins to nuzzle my shoulder. She looks around the area. As she does so, her eyes reflect the light of sunset, just like the broad, glittering shallows of the lake. Yeah, it is. I nod as I keep looking into her eyes. Finally noticing my gaze, she realizes what I mean and laughs shyly. Yeah. Sex does help. It's a soft murmur. Actually, don't rely on sex for that, by the way. Like, 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 real talk, don't rely on that. Obviously, it is a really, like, it can be a deep connection if you mean it to be, but don't rely on it for it. But it's the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. Welcome back, Kotodu. She wraps her arms around me. God damn it, don't do that shit to me, come on. Why did we fade to white? I don't like that. That night in my dreams, I think over many things. I love Hotodu. I don't want to lose her. And most of all, I want to make her the happiest girl in the world.
Why did we have to fade to white for that? I thought something bad was going to happen. But that was Wednesday, so now we enter Thursday. Four more days. And that's it. That be it. Ayo. I'm woken by bright sunlight and a voice calling my name. But something feels off. Ah, it's because Kokoro doesn't usually come to wake me up. Good morning. I wonder if I've overslept by accident as I open my eyes. That that ain't that ain't Kokoro. Uh, I'm startled to see Hotoru's face right in front of me. So we fucking fall to the floor. As I jump in surprise, I end up falling out of bed. Ow. I'm still not fully awake, so my senses are still dull. It doesn't really hurt that much, but I can tell I whacked my elbow. I stagger to my feet. What's happening? I see. That makes sense. But by that logic, why didn't you just come and sleep in my bed, like I invited you to last night? Ah, oh, come on. Of course not, obviously. Why would I? Hey, it's best to be honest. Of course I am. I mean, I love you, right? And when we're making love, the way you respond to my- <laughs> She doesn't let me finish my rant. True, you really can't control your voice when you're making love, Hotoru. The morning? I'd be happy to do naughty things all day long, but I guess I should keep that to myself. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. By the way, what time is it now? At least we're waking up in the morning. Huh, I slept pretty late. Everything's more relaxed during summer vacation, I guess. It is, but on weekends it's also whenever my rat dogs decide that, oh, it is time to be awake. Alright, well, let me put on my clothes and I'll make some breakfast. As I start to take my day clothes out of a drawer, Hotodu offers her services. Hotodu, can you cook? I see, but it's okay, I'll do the cooking. She gives up without, su or without much protest. How do I put this? What with the Kokoro Onigiri incident, I find it hard to trust the cooking of outside world girls just yet. Other than Azuki. Azuki's the exception. She's godlike, apparently, to Makoto. Which is understandable, I mean, given her position. Okay, we will uh, we'll save it here. Uh, where are we? I think we're here, I guess. Damn, we made some fucking progress. Actually, we are not there. We're down here. Damn, I have fucked up my whole, like saving deal here. I don't know what is what anymore. Sorry, I guess we were here. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll realize that we're on slot 10 next time. Oh wait, no, we're supposed to be in slot 9. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, well, enough of that. Don't ever rely on me for organizing your shit. I'll just get it all wrong. Uh, yeah, so the end of this playthrough is going to contain of only long episodes for various reasons that I won't get into here, but yeah, it's time to wrap up this playthrough. We are in the ending stretch, I believe. I think that the, um, uh, I think the deal here that, that, that we have going on for us here to end off this playthrough is we are technically on a route that is not the true ending, but I guess the ending that we have to obtain in order to get the true ending. So we go through this, we kill the original, and we go through that heartbreak that I'm sure is about to come up because we're getting closer to to our Hotoru here. And then the second option becomes available. We go back to that save that I hopefully won't overwrite. And we, uh, I guess we go down the true ending route if you even want to call it that, I don't know. I mean, 
I feel like this might be a case of just two endings that you just decide whichever one works best for you, but we're not there yet to uh, to really see the differences, so we keep on grinding, and uh, we'll we'll figure it all out as we go along. But yeah, this was a good episode, and like I said, we'll we'll keep up the longer episodes going forward to the end, just so we can wrap her up. It's been a long journey. It's time we uh, we really just get this thing done. I hope you guys are okay with that. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe for more and all that. And I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.